Hello and welcome to another demonstration. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use the Ansible Automation platform to build reports. I mean, it sounds simple, um, but what I'm going to be doing is using a uh, Jinja 2 template to uh, very modularly build reports, uh, both in CSV format as well as in uh, HTML. Now, a lot of this work, especially the template, was heavily uh, built. I mean, basically, Nick Arellano built it for me, and I am just utilizing it and showing it, sharing it to the world. So I definitely thank uh, Nick for this. You're going to see it in the blog post uh, as well, so you can get to um, to him to uh, thank him properly. So first things first, I am just going to fire off my piece of automation. I have a simple job template in AAP that is going to produce a report. So I'm going to launch the template. And then I'm going to pop over to my public Git repository to take a look at the various files. So I've got two here in the repo. I've got report.yml is my playbook. And then here's my Jinja 2 template. So I'm going to start out by taking a look at the report. It is pretty simple and straightforward. At the uh, top of my playbooks, as usual, as per normal, I like to set up my various variables. And then moving down, I have the uh, tasks that I'm going to be utilizing. So here I am uh, first doing a rather gather facts, right? This is on by default, but you see I put true right here. What that's do is again, it's gonna gather a bunch of system information. And so this report, uh, we were at a hackathon and the customer wanted to kind of look at some kernel versioning and various things like that. Like they're gonna run a nightly um, like yum update or something akin to that. And then they wanna look to see, oh, what systems actually rebooted? Um, various things like that, what version is everything sitting on. And so I'm gathering all that information and putting it into a report. So here I am issuing a simple shell command. Last reboot will show a big list of all the last time the systems were, were uh, rebooted. If I add kind of some additional uh, formatting, I'm getting uh, kind of that information narrowed down to just the specific pieces I want. After that, I start building my uh, CSV, comma separated file, right? And so it's uh, really just information, comma separated. I can double click it, open it in Excel, open it in a sheet in Google, makes it really easy to look at. And it's just a basically a plain text formatted file. So in here, I am saying, hey, on the local host, because I'm delegating it to uh, the local host in an AAP2.x that's gonna be running inside an execution environment, which is really just a container. So it's gonna be saving it into the temp folder there. And I'm using variables to build all that out that I will be continually reusing. And the line is going to be the headers. Now, I we put them in a header section because uh, the way we are processing them in the Jinja 2 template, which I will break down momentarily. But you can see I have the headers variable set up right here. So I'm going to have the host name, distribution version, kernel version, and then that last rebooted information. So it's really just adding that line to a brand new file, right? The file doesn't exist. So create true, it's going to create that. Next, I'm actually going to go through and flesh out the information in this CSV. So here you can see it is just running through my list of hosts. I've actually got three in this inventory for my demo here. So it's just going to be processing one at a time and then adding all that information last, or rather not last, but next, um, there is a really cool module in the community.general called read CSV. And I learned about it during this when I was doing some Googling around and you can actually take a CSV file <clears throat> and you can read it in and it will variableize all of that information. So it makes it super easy to work with CSV files. So you could create all these variables in memory and work through doing all of that, or you could be lazy and just write it onto a CSV file. So I've got it, I can manipulate it, I can check it out, I can do whatever I want with it, but then I can just read it right back in and it'll have it all variableized, ready to rock. So that makes it super simple. Next, and actually the very last step is I'm sending an email. So I'm aggregating all that information and I am sending it over both as an attachment. So I've got the CSV file there, but also in the body, I'm using the lookup plugin. So I'm basically saying, hey, for the contents of this variable, look up using the template module, which is, hey, Jinja2 template, look up the Jinja2 template information, flush that out and stick that into the body section. And that's all predicated on this CSV information that I've uh, initially put in. So I'm gonna take a look at the email that actually gets sent. It is this system one right here. And as you can see, it ran through my list of hosts and formatted it very pretty. It's nice and simple to see, read, easy to use. Um, and imagine, for example, uh, if there was certain criteria like uh, 
these two are 8.2 and this one's 8.5 is a anything older than 8.5 is is you know a warning that I could change the cell color to say yellow or something like that right it gives you opportunities to manipulate manipulate this um, uh, the viewing experience here for this uh, this uh, what is this a, a graph you know not a graph what is this a table goodness my brain stopped working for a moment there but then I've also got the attached CSV file you can see it is um, less interesting information I mean it's the exact same information um, and actually um, Google Sheets kind of formats it nicely but if you open that at Excel it'll all be squashed and so it's kind of annoying but honestly if you've got it all right here presented to you in the email this is probably all you actually need but I'm going to use this information in conjunction with this to kind of explain what it's doing inside of the template so I'm going to open my Jinja 2 template all right, so here's my Jinja 2 template that it's going to be running through, processing, and uh, building all the information with. So as you can see up at the, here at the top, I am just setting up the table, and I'm not going to burn through this in my um, blog post. I dive a little bit more in there, but there's a ton of HTML tutorials out there. It's been around a while, so you can uh, figure most of this stuff out. At the top, I am setting up the headers, and remember, we use the headers variable right and this is where it comes into play so headers dot split split is uh, an action where you kind of explode a variable and you say split this into individual little pieces and then you define what the separator is and so remember it was comma separated so those headers are all getting split so this is going to set up the headers across the top right the very first row it's going to build that one at a time and so I am doing a Jinja 2 for loop so it's going to split those into its individual pieces, save that list into the header variable, and then it's just going to loop through that header variable until it's complete. So it's going to build out that first row. Next, it's going to take the uh, variable that I created, I instantiated when I read in that CSV file and that CSV underscore file. And it uh, takes all that information and it actually builds it into a CSV file dot list. And so if I want to go through that list of info, I can do that uh, by specifying this variable. So another for loop, I'm saving that information into host. And then down here, I am looping through, uh, basically I'm splitting the header variable again in the exact same way, right? So I have a nested loop. So on the outside for each host, so I have host number one, I'm going to run through and then I will go through each one of the little header portions. And if you could see the variable structure right here, it is host, right? The individual host, and then the individual field um, for each header option. So first it's gonna be host name, and then it'll be, uh, let's see, let's take a look back at the information. So it's first it's gonna be host name, then it'll be distro version, and then kernel version, and then last reboot. So it's just gonna iterate over them one at a time. So for Greg Zabbix, uh, it will first grab host, and then host name, and then it'll be host, and then distro version, and then host and then kernel, right? So it'll just iterate through that. It'll complete that host's information. It'll move on to the next. It'll do that and do that, and it'll do that through the entirety of the list. Now, say for example, this CSV has 10 options. I don't actually have to iterate over all 10. Now this header that I specified here, this header section in my playbook right here, I could create a uh, email underscore headers uh, variable that only has say for example host name and last rebooted like if I didn't actually care about that information so while the CSV is actually getting populated with all this information if I just want the output of the HTML in that Jinja 2 template to have a subset of that I can specify that that's the interesting thing about the way this is built so whatever I define in this header variable those are the only fields it's going to actually introduce into this. So I can have a huge CSV with a lot of different columns, but I can narrow down to the specific pieces I'm actually interested in. And the way this is flexibly written, there's nothing hard coded about it. So um, all of that is maintained inside of the playbook. So whatever I specify in this headers variable, whatever gets read in the CSV is going to get spit out into the uh, corresponding table. That means with this single Jinja 2 template, I can create lots of different reports based on CSVs, and I never have to actually make any manipulations to this Jinja 2 template, which is pretty awesome. So it becomes super flexible. So keeping that in mind, I can create, um, say, a role, right? And a role is kind of a modular piece of um, automation that fits inside of uh, my uh, individual playbook. And so I can just reference that role to 
pull this piece out so I can use it in a lot of different automations. Now, if I'm doing it in AAP, I could have this sit inside of a playbook in a workflow, right? If I want to make that one piece modular where it builds and emails the reports, like basically this portion could all be uh, modular inside of a workflow. It's just another piece that snaps in. So that is kind of the genius of this design that Nick came up with. Super flexible, uh, infinitely reusable. Um, uh, let's see, any other little pieces that I should point out is this styling right here is done right here inside of uh, the uh, table rows themselves because not all email clients will interpret HTML the same. And this seems to have kind of the widest adoption. So if you're opening this in Outlook, it'll still look formatted properly. So if you're a corporate user or if you're a Gmail user or Thunderbird or whatever happens to be, this uh, formatting should work in your email client. Now this could also be utilized, the same template could be utilized to stick this into a web page, right? So you could have a status web page that uh, this report runs nightly and it flushes out that status web page. So if you want to be able to be able to go there as well, if it doesn't necessarily have to go in an email, it gives you a lot of options. So if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. Uh, thanks. And we will see you next time.